doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you <laughs> sitting there with Kia L. Why you mad? <laughs> Yo, we were rocking the room. We got CTG in the building. How you doing today, yes, bro? Yes, sir. I'm off. I feel uh, good. Bro, you shot a music video with my boy Hilo Visuals. Hell Track yeah. was fire. I showed it to Hell of a when Hell of a came here and did in his interview. That's my Rocking to it, bro. Uh, talk <laughs> about creating that song, and it's a whole different sound, and I love it, but talk about how you guys created that song, bro. You know, it's funny. Uh, the reason I created that song, because a lot of time with like independent artists, is when you out here working by yourself, it take like like when you really out here, bro. Like it really take money to like tap in. And not only that, it's not just that you got to be genuine, but like the song itself is about, you know, like niggas just doubting you. You feels me? And it's like a lot of people they don't think you be doing the shit that you're supposed to do, or like you know they gonna say something about you no matter what the fuck you do. So you know, like these fuck niggas know though. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You feel me? And I appreciated it too because it, you did something different, man. You did, you know, there's a whole Detroit wave going on right now. There's a whole sound that's coming out of Detroit, but you you experimented with other stuff, and it was really genuine. Like it was authentic. It wasn't forced. It sounded like a whole different lane, bro. Thank you, um, bro. You don't even know how much that fucking mean to me. That's real life, though. And I really definitely was trying to tap into that. And it's like, it's mostly because, like, I really tapped in with you from the first place. And you told me the things you told me. Mm. I swear to God, bro. And that made me a better artist, bro. And that made me want to work harder, bro. It made me work on my, like, craft and everything. Yeah. And, like, also, like, with the video, like, I feel like, like you said, like, there's a lot of people out here trying to act like something that, that, they, that they not, bro. Yeah. And I, like, I made my video. It was, like, a parody. I made it, like, uh, like a representation of the 70s show. You ever seen that? Yes, of course. Man. And, like, uh, my dog Nick shot. The hell out of that junk. You know? It was a fun video, man. It yeah. was exciting to watch. Uh, you know, I did, like you said, the 70s show theme kind of rotating, going around, yeah. showing the friends going crazy. Even Nick was in the video at the end, which was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You know, you had to give my dog in there. Yeah, you guys really uh, did something very different. And I hope that Detroit can appreciate something like that because we don't need to hear something that's so violent all the damn you know, time. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, people just want to turn up and then go home to their families at the end of the night, bro. Like, you yeah. ain't got to, like... Like, but like, well, it was um, uh, me and Doc, Hilo was talking about, Hilo Visuals was talking about, it was like, you know, you go to a place and it's like this thing in Detroit, like, people, like, if something going good, they feel like they got to make something bad happen. Like, yeah. you know what? It's too good. Let's shoot this motherfucker. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. You feel me? Like, it's like, dang, bro, for real? Yeah, uh, right. Just to enjoy the night, like, no friction type stuff, man. Yeah. What do you think's been, um, you know, do you, do you feel like when you pushed the song, did you get the reciprocation you expected? Did you get it out to the right people? Did you get responses from it that you expected yet, or is it still too early? You know, it's funny. Uh, I recently um, just tapped in with Say Cheese. He sent me his email. Um, I'm tapping in with my uh, dog, Hip Hop Lab. He sent me his prices. He feels me. So like it's a lot of things. I'm I'm also want to tap in on World Star Hip Hop. Even you mm -hmm. feels me if like you know it just take time and investment. You know like you know we out here working. We out here really doing what we got to do. You know rather if it's like you know shaking and sign. You know shaking the pack whatever. But, mm -hmm. Or you know like you know doing what you got to do, bro. Like you gotta get it regardless because people going like. They gonna like you know you gotta stand for something fall for anything you feel me? Yeah, man, a hundred percent. You're taking an approach. You understand the realities of the circumstance, right? Like mm -hmm. marketing yourself is a huge part of the game. Facts. Um, talk about how you're navigating through the Detroit scene. What are some of the difficulties of it as of far? You know what is and it's funny, man. Like I'd probably say the only thing that was like uh, kind of difficult is when I caught like my first couple cases. Mm. And then after that, like, but as far as it go with, like, actual meeting people and, like, uh, getting to meet new artists and them tapping in with me and messing with my music, it's been, like, you know, like amazing, man. It's been real life, and I and I definitely am blessed. And, I, you know, I feel like y'all with me, you feel me? Like, I think mm -hmm. you definitely, like, tapping in. Like, yeah, man. Uh, fellas, you guys want to introduce yourselves real quick, man? Talk really loud. Like, so he's... Okay. <laughs> 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 Yeah, tell him what that shit for. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. You want to introduce me? Yeah, I'm GQ, man. Mm. It don't, not like the magazine. It's kind of like the magazine, but I like to, you know, I like to be nice. Mm. <laughs> we can't forget my dog Zan in the back. You feel me? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> CTG, man, uh, crafted the great, man. Talk about, um, you know, how long you've been working and you've been here before we've talked before mm -hmm. man but talk about how long you've been making music for people who haven't gotten a chance to check out the last interview and got to catch up on you man bro i've probably been making music for almost like 
five, six years. Mm. Like it really started when I went out to Florida. Then I came back. Mm. Um, but like really when I tapped into Florida, like that's when I like paid for my own stuff. I remember my first studio, it was on my birthday, first turn, like nineteen, everything. Yeah. I had paid like uh motherfucking how much was that shit? It was seventy five plus seventy five, so that's like one fifty. Yeah, one fifty. I paid one fifty for the shit. I have my own cash though, you know, just working on my own type shit. Yeah. And you know, like when I was in the city, was nobody showing me that love, bro. I had to go get that shit on my own, bro. And that mm. shit is gonna it's gonna pay off because you know what? Like, I don't care what you going through, bro. If you keep striving and grinding forever the fuck you, like, trying to do, bro, that shit going to pay off, bro. It's going to hurt like a motherfucker. But damn, nigga. Damn, nigga, what you doing with that lighter, bro? Hold on. HP, baby. What you... <laughs> nah, bro, but you feel me? Like, that's that's real life, though. Uh, yeah, man, no, I 100% agree with you, bro. Like, you know, if you keep it on at all times and you just keep pushing through eventually something comes out of it yeah. you know you just you have to stand out i always tell people like if you're not standing out in the city then you really have a low chances of making it unless you just want to be a feature artist that's continuously doing features for people Facts. but you're not really progressing in the fact that you know your artistry hits a le uh, elevation of making money just off the music you that's know true. like i always talk about how there's a lot of artists that just make money because they have exposure bases like I can mm. put you on a song. I'll, I'll feature on a song for you, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get a, my exposure from my fan base. But are you ever going to really make money just off the music? Are you going to get that streaming money? You know what I'm saying? Are mm -hmm. people going to pay you to perform at their shows? Or are you just going to make money off features? You know? feels me. So you got it. Once you hit the mainstream or once you hit a certain level, you're going to get paid just for your streams. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what that's what I feel like being an artist is really about because people are paying to hear you, not just to get exposure from you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What level do you want to take your music uh, music uh, career to? You know, it's funny, man. Mm. I don't even, like, have no limit, man. I swear I don't. When I say I want to take this shit to the fucking furthest ever, you know, I can't, I ain't, I ain't trying to tap in on that. Uh, like, I'm trying to take this shit the furthest, like, ever, bro. Like, I'm trying to yeah. be, like, one to, like, and fuck just being the coldest, bro. I want to say something to these niggas, bro. I'm like, I call myself a hood conscious, bro, because I'm, I'm talking to the pain in the streets, bro. It's a lot of fake shit going on. Like, people be pretending this shit, like, but it's just like, man, bro. Do you mess with that, man? Do you mess with, like, I know a lot of people are saying, okay, if you're a trap, you know, drill rapper, you don't have to live that lifestyle. You can still rap about it if it's sweet enough. But now you're talking about something that comes from Detroit where, like, people actually are going through a struggle. Yeah. Some people can come out from outside of Detroit and claim that struggle, but it's not real. Yeah. Kind of talk talk about that and how you look at that. Man, bro, low-key, I hate that shit because when I was in Florida, a lot of a lot of, a lot lot of of niggas be like, oh, they from Detroit, but really they from, like, Kalamazoo or some shit like oh wait Kalamazoo nigga that's like that's a whole hour away or like or like they say when they come to the city they uh they try to drive like straight through it like they don't even get like in the city they stay on the highways like they don't even tap in I'd be like bro y'all really that scared it's not even like that for real it's like really love out here like especially like cause like you gotta feel me like the gangs out here different bro like you know they more like hoods you feel me so like they family so you know that if you know them, bro, you ain't fucking around, you ain't talking no shit, like you ain't doing too much, bro. You gonna be straight, bro, unless you just out here like doing some dumb shit. And then you ask, you know. No, no, for shit. sure. But even just the aspect of claiming something that you're yeah, not really that a part you're not, of, you know. Yeah. And then it's like, why, bro? Like, you know. They do that shit for fun, though. It's a sport to a lot of niggas. It's a sport. That's right, niggas. Niggas be hungry for them strikes, bro. I was in high school. I went to Oak Park. Not to, not to, you know. I don't want to like. In, intrude or anything, but hmm. like, I went to Oak Park, so like a lot of people, they he did too. They they did that shit for sport. Yeah, like, no. It was just fun for a lot of people. No, yeah, I can feel that, man. I can feel that. It's a easy thing to rep it, but not have anything to do with it. And let me you know and let me say something too. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and when it come down to that shit, bro, like you gotta realize, bro, like a lot of people get caught up. And like trying to do that shit, but the main thing about like the real niggas that's actually doing it, like the original goal was to feed their families. Like and a lot of people getting caught up, like as you go on and through life, you get caught up, you forget that goal, bro. You get so caught up, you can't even lead that shit, bro. So why would you even want that life? It's just real life niggas trying to get out of it. And it's like people out here, they be like glorifying that shit. And I just be like, dog, like man, man I don't understand that shit. And like you gotta like really listen to my music, cause like I never glorify no shit, but like I said, you got to stand for something, fall for anything, bro. Because people going to, like, look at you and they going to, like, motherfucking try to tell you who the fuck you are. 
Right. So you're saying that people are trying to glorify something that people are really trying to get out with. Like people yeah. that really are living that life that was are the original using it. goal. You feel yeah. me? Like to change lives, bro. Like to change the lives around you. Like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. Like real life. And it's just like like, you know, like niggas be forgetting that shit, bro. You get caught up in everything else, like what you like, what niggas be wanting type shit. And it's like, it's cool and all, like, you know, go get your shit, be an investor, be a businessman, bro. Like, but don't be fake, my nigga. Be mm. genuine. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? Be a genuine ass nigga. Yeah. Niggas gonna respect that mo, bro. They gonna hear you talking, they gonna hear your words, they gonna look you in the eye, whatever. They gonna respect <laughs> that shit, bro. And they gonna love you for it. Yeah. At the same time, you gotta protect that energy because niggas at the same time, when they love you, it's also an equal amount of people hating you. Yeah, and that's a fact. Have you felt that before? Have you felt like you know when you were seeing more success and when you were seeing the outreach that a lot of people became more negative towards you, or did everything kind of stay the same? You know, it's interesting. The more I do, I definitely see more positive stuff, and that's just because in my circle, I definitely talk to my my peoples and I communicate with them, and I feel like uh like as far as it go, like with like coming down to like doing certain things or moving a certain way, I know my people got my back. Yeah. For 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 a good like for like a lot of things, bro. And it's like something like it's like better than my some of my own family. Mm. You feel me? So Yeah. It's interesting that your family sometimes doesn't support you as much as the people that you just ended up locking in with through life. Facts. Random people you just ended up meeting, right? Facts. Um it's you crazy. know, what has been something that um, you're most proud of so far of your music career and what you've been accomplishing so far? All right. So, I, you know, I was thinking about this, too, before I came on the show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was going to say, like, I was the first person to come on the show two times. Yeah. But hell of a came on here. So I'm like, mm-hmm. all right. But I'm one of those group of people. <laughs> and also just, like, the fact that, like, you know, I get to work with people. Like, you know, you just told me hell of a listen to my music. Yes, sir. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. That's like you people pay for that. Pay. So it's just like and not no little shit. So it's just like, man, like it's a lot of blessings coming in. I'm gonna remain humble and you know we gonna motherfucking like take off of this shit and keep it moving, bro. No, yeah. One thing I um you know, when you w- even if you're doing business with anybody in the music industry, if you're doing business with anybody in the music industry and you lock in early with them, mm-hmm. like I feel like this is an early part of my career. Mm-hmm. When you lock in with me early, it's not just about us working together. It's about the fact that we're building a connection, first of all, Facts. and that you rock with my platform and I rock with your platform. So <laughs> in the future, no matter how successful we both become, we're always going to stay tied in. And that's a Versus fact. if somebody tries to hit me up in the future when everything that. is already successful, then it's going to be less of a chance of me wanting to work with you. Like, I-, I didn't build that with you. So anybody you work with in the beginning, regardless of how that work is being done or what means it takes to get that work done, Mm -hmm. you're locked in because you started off with me early. You know, sometimes a a artist will charge for a future, like, you know, like 10 grand grand for a Mm -hmm. future or something like that. But if they met you five years ago and they worked with you five years ago, they might be like, bro, just throw me 25. Just, let's, I just, you know what I'm saying? That's how it works because it's a connection that, Nobody forgets. You're one of the first people to come on here. So for me, CTG's always crap the grades always gonna be locked in with me. You know what I'm saying? That's how it works. People, <laughs> that's real shit, bro. Hey, nah, people, that shit just touched yeah, my heart. That's bro. how it works, bro. Because you believe in shit. me. At the end, <laughs> nah, because because you believe in me. You wouldn't be here if you didn't believe in me, right? You, you if you didn't right. believe in me, you would not be here. That's so if fact. you believe in me, I'm gonna keep fucking with you. That's you a know fact, what I'm saying, bro. Hey. You know, yeah, no, for that, real. That shit, that's a real ass nah, shit. Nah, for real, bro. Hey, if I nah, show I you my DMs, bro, shit. if I show you my DMs right now, there's people trying to come on this podcast. I left them on red. Blue <laughs> checks. Yo, for real, no cap. Major artists are trying to hit me up to come on. I could show you right now, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll just just to do it, just to fuck it. Fuck, fact. I'll do it just to do it. <laughs> for look, look, fact, look, 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 Hold that, bro. No, no, I don't give a fuck. No, no, I'm not going to say the name. I'm not going to say the name. But look, I didn't even... I didn't even open his shit because, first of all, you know how long I've been working for, bro. Why are you trying to hit me up now, bro? Damn. Why are you Why are you trying to hit me up now, bro? Hold up, sir. I don't know if you guys know who this That's is, but I'm not. I don't. I left that shit on red because I'm thinking to myself, like, bro, you know how long I've been working for. Why are you hitting me up now? It bothers me. I don't care how successful you are in the music industry. You've been seeing me work, bro. Now you want to uh, hit me up. First of all, you don't even want to follow me, bro. You just want to hit. Dead. Hey, you just want to say. Hey, you just want to say. Hey, pull Look. up. Let me pull up on you. I want to work with you now, nah, bro. Right quick. It doesn't work like, like that. You gotta come with genuine energy. Hey, you gotta come with genuine energy. Niggas, you telling me you want to work with me doesn't make me want to work with you, bro. You That's have to come. Crazy. 
you know what I'm saying? I know he's sick as hell, too. Nah, I'm sick, bro. I've been saying that shit for years. You know what I'm talking about, bro? Just say, you have a better chance getting me without Jay. You have a better chance meeting me on the street and being genuine with me versus you being famous and successful and saying, yo, let me uh, come work with you. Like, you I, you don't, you haven't been locked in with me, bro. Why for the fuck fact. do I care? I don't care. I for a fact. Shit. Mm. I got some money, shit. How much money do you need? <laughs> period, bro. <laughs> period, bro. <laughs> I gotta say, it, bro. Up. That's <laughs> listen, uh, CTG man, you uh, you're coming out with a different style, like we said. Now, talk about what it took for you to take the chance of coming out with a different style, and not following the trends. Man, bro, like you know what? I definitely always been like uh, a type of nigga to be on that shit, bro. Like. You feel me? I ain't never been a regular nigga, bro. I always, like, been on my own shit. I draw. I make my own graphic art sometimes, bro. Yeah. Uh, I uh, Basically, most of my shit, like, if it's graphic art, I did it myself. Or, um, like, you know, I used to be in the hood, you know, skateboarding and shit, bro. I ain't give a fuck about none of that, bro. And they used to show me love. Yeah. Like, you feel me? Like, I ain't never had no problem being who I am. So it's just, like, that's always going to portray in my music. And I got some low bangers coming out. I got some. I got some love shit. I'm about to tap in for the ladies. You feel me? Like you know, you got to tap in with the hearts. You know, with our queens. You know, so y'all like. You got to look at somebody tuned. like Sada Baby, right? And look at how a lot of people would have considered what he was doing was goofy, mm. right? Mm. But the mo one of the most successful artists ever in Detroit and countrywide, right? Facts. He stuck to who he was. He didn't care. He didn't care about, yo, I like Dragon Ball Z. And <laughs> I like That's dance, true. Dancing it's in my music videos and going crazy bro, and saying whatever Sada's I want to say. first songs, bro. Rewind us, man. What do you remember? I think I think he got some shit like literally for like you like you you Haga show bro like, I remember that shit bro. <laughs> oh, everything or some anime shit bro but that shit was hard bro that shit was hard bro on oh, everything yeah. but isn't it crazy how he stuck to his guns Facts. and like people and rock with him more than anybody else just like you just said you're not gonna change up facts now nah, niggas rapping his style trying yeah. to yeah. You know, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> little bitch, I ain't mean, stop, right? I ain't mean, stop. Wait, is there ever been anything you wanted to do, but you you did think to yourself, like, you know, it's not the time to bring that out yet. It's not the time to showcase this part of me yet. Man, like that happened a lot. It be it be so many songs that I got that I have not tapped in with or like let out. Like, but when I like find that one and that beat, you know, I immediately. Tap in, lock in. I, I might, I might be writing for like, freaking a month. Really tapping in, huh? Why don't you drop it? Cause, bro, like, certain not everything need to be out. Not everything need to be out for a fact. It don't. Mm. Like, you feel me? Well, I'm gonna drop a low quality song for when I know I can make like, four, five high quality songs and put that all out. You feel me? And then like, really promote the fuck out of it and know for a fact that if these hit the right ears, it's over. Right. You feel me? So it's just like. Yeah, and it's like also it's about your like um like you said just how you build your relationship. Yeah, you don't want to flood the market. You want Facts. quality out there. Facts. Quality control. Facts. You know Facts. what I'm saying? I don't want to hear bullshit from an artist either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to hear solid shit. I'd rather hear you come out one song a month that's high quality versus ten songs a month that ain't shit. Yeah, unless you really that nigga, unless you little Wayne for real, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro, like. So, man, bro, Who's the greatest really, really rapper Wayne. to you of all time? This is cold. Like, he the only person that ever really just got on the mic and was just, oh, my greatest rapper? Who the greatest yeah. rapper of all time to me? Oh, dang. Who the greatest rapper of all time to me? Yeah. I say Common. Talk about Common, man. That's the first person to talk you know about what? Common. You know what? You know what? I know people probably wanted me to say some street-ass, old-school nigga. <laughs> But like common cold, bro. He y'all ain't even know he used to battle rap. He got he got a diss about Drake called Canada Dry. Mm. Look that junk up and listen to it. That was the hardest diss I heard, bro, to this day on everything. Mm. Cook Drake. They was feuding for a minute. For a minute. Common was uh diss it was dissing Drake. He dissed Drake. Two, bro. two completely different artists. Bro, look up Canada Dry. <laughs> uh, oh, who's the no. who's the craziest who's your favorite Detroit artist? Who's my favorite Detroit yeah. artist? And why, bro? Man, I'd probably say right now, I have a few. So Payroll Giovanni for sure. Uh Cash Kid. And then I'd probably say, who else? Um my dog Ray. Babyface Ray. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mess with Sada too, but like, it's just like, man, like, bro, like, really, like, Payroll and Cash Kid, like, 
inspire the fuck out of you, bro. Like mm-hmm. you being that bitch, you don't you being that bitch cooking eggs, but you about to cook the fuck out them mm-hmm. eggs. <laughs> Woke up this morning, all fifty of my bitches mad at me. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you feel me, like bro, stupid. Mm-hmm. Nigga said, I'm, bro, I'm just mm-hmm. saying, bro, or like Ray, bro. He's just like he talking to Mike, like he had talked to you. Mm-hmm. He talking to you. What do you, you hope, feel you said? What do you hope everybody takes from your music when you know they get to hear it and when you put it on an album? What do you hope people take away from it? Man, for real, I want them to take a little bit of everything, but mm. at the same time, like I feel like I want to tap back into the soul of music, mm. and you know, just like also like having fun, like because like it's a lot of it's a lot of sad shit going on. Like you don't always need like just some sad shit in your face. Like sometimes you need like some shit that's gonna turn you up. You know, you can be with your boys. You might be you know chilling like cause you mad cause your bitch done broke up with you and she was sucking gang. You feel me? You know, you chill, listen to my shit, bro. You be straight. <laughs> uh, talk about some future uh, projects we can look forward to, bro. <clears throat> uh, I got this um, one John I mm-hmm. got coming out. Um, like I said, I'm about to work on uh, for the ladies more of. It's a, a love song more of. Not really, because I don't really be on that love stuff. Like, it's hard for me to write about, like, real deep emotional, but it's like I can still tap in and make people feel they, like what, what I'm talking about. So I also got some old stuff coming out. I'm about to drop this album. I think I'm going to call it Genesis. Why? Because this is how it all started. This is how, this is how, it, how it began. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, for real. And I, I, I got to think about the cover art, and I've been thinking about that junk, and I was like, low-key, that shit would be so hard. Sure. It's probably been done before, but I like that shit. You feel me? Listen, man, crafted. I'm going to have to get you back on, and I'm, I've told you I'm, I'm, we're going to figure out, you know, I'll have to get you back on here again for uh, for a longer time, man. I know we ran short on time today, but it's it's I love having you guys on here. You guys bring seriously great energy, man. Thank you, bro. I love, this is my favorite type of energy, man. Everybody's just <laughs> open-minded, chilling, man. You guys, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we, yeah. we take ourselves seriously when the time matters, mm-hmm. too. You know what I'm saying? But it's fun to have these cool conversations and keep everything open. Listen, Crap that the Great was on the show, man. CTG, go check out his new music video. My boy, Hilo Visual, shot the, the visuals for it. Yes, um, we're going to get you back on here as soon as possible, bro. Parallel Sound Studios, where we host these at Hilo Visuals, is shooting these productions. We're out. Yes, sir. Peace. Yes, sir. Still a good 30 minutes. Not bad. Yeah, that was good. I appreciate that.